Hello everyone, this is uh, Victoria here, and I had a different video planned uh, that I was going to do at some point this week. I might still do that, um, kind of going through the myths of, you know, what it is to be trans and what people sometimes tend to think about that. Uh, something happened in the last several days or so that I feel like I need to respond to. Um, as the title says, I am a Christian and yes, I am obviously transgender. I am not to a point where at least I don't feel that I pass very well. Um, that's not really the point of it. Yes, it would be nice if I did, but um, I'm just, I'm going to, from the other side of it, okay, uh, and I'm, I'm going to say this first, uh, being transgender is not a choice. Transitioning is a choice, even though oftentimes we can feel like it's not because, um, it often feels and is quite necessary for our quality of life, for our mental health, um, different things like that. Uh, but ultimately that is still, um, a choice that you make. Now, obviously I don't feel that people should be condemned for that choice, but, um, if you're going to say that being trans itself is a choice, just like some people think that being gay is a choice. And then you have, um, in, uh, Catholic theology where they, uh, specify, um, practicing homosexuals. So like, Yes, you might have, you might be a man and have like sexual desires towards men. Um, that's not your fault. You were born that way. As long as you abstain, right? Um, you're not sinning. Um, so if you can't at least differentiate that, um, then this video is not for you. It's not going to do anything for you. We are not going to come even close to finding any sort of common ground. So, um, this video is for the people, for the Christians who have gotten to a point where they acknowledge that, okay, being trans isn't a choice. Um, having those feelings, um, and that stuff, um, in your mind, um, you did not choose that. Um, but that doesn't mean that you have to transition. I'm not saying that's my viewpoint, but that is um, the viewpoint that um, if we're going to get anywhere in this video, that, that's at least like where you need to be. Um, so uh, those of you who don't know, um, if you're watching this video, I'm going to assume you came here from the other video that Dallas made or that uh, someone else made about um, the, the whole controversy about the pride flag on, um, the set of the chosen. Um, for those of you who have not heard of the chosen, um, it's a really good show. Um, and that is ultimately what it is. It's a TV show. Even, um, Dallas Jenkins, uh, the producer and director will tell you that, um, it is not a replacement for scripture. It is not a replacement for, um, praying or actually talking to God or, um, any of that stuff. It's, a it's a TV show about Jesus. And while they try their best to maintain accuracy and to stay scripturally sound, um, they, they themselves will tell you like, this is not something that you do like instead of reading the Bible, right? It's meant to go in line with it. Um, and I and a lot of other people have said that the chosen has gotten them more on fire for God, more seeking God, more curious about God than they have been in a long time. And I am, I'm in that camp also. Um, and mine was doubly compounded because I didn't set foot in a church for close to a year after I came out, which I came out 
last year in April of 2022. And um, because of the way that I was raised and some of the churches that uh, I grew up in and went to as a kid and even as a teenager and even as a um, young adult, 20, 25, um, you know, that sort of time frame. I was convinced and I believed that God hated me for uh, being trans. So church was the last place that I wanted to be. And um, so during that time, uh, some of the only exposure that I got to God and of course Jesus um, was the chosen. So for those of you who make comments like, you know, well, they talking about the LGBTQ people, um, shouldn't be watching this show um they shouldn't be trying to hijack this show as i've seen some people say uh which is not happening but those of you who make those types of comments i want you to understand what you're saying what you're saying is that in a time of my life when i was in my lowest point and one of the darkest points that i've ever been that uh, i should not have had access to jesus because this show was about the only access that I had to Jesus. My faith was not strong enough to read the Bible. My faith was not definitely not strong enough to go to church with people who probably hated me. Um, or at least how, that's how I feel and how I felt. Um, so this show does a lot of bringing people into the fold. And at some point you have to um, trust God instead of trying to speak for God you have to trust God to actually do what he said that he's going to do which is to transform our hearts right and I believe that based on my scriptural knowledge and uh, things in the Bible that I've read now um, things that I recall from growing up uh, things that I have um, discovered um, since then um, like I'll, I'll give you a very, very quick example. This is not a video meant to uh, break down um, theology and original Hebrew texts and everything, but I'll, I'll just give you one example. One verse that's constantly thrown specifically at transgender people is um, Deuteronomy 22.5. We all know it. Some of you may have even thrown that verse at people like me, um, which is um, a woman uh, should not uh, put on the garment of a man, um, nor shall a man dress as a woman. Uh, for whoever does this is detestable to the Lord your God. Uh, some translations say um, whoever does this is an abomination. Some people say whoever does this is abhorrence um, to the Lord your God. Um, different translations word it kind of differently, but it's all basically saying the same thing. If you're a man, you should dress like a woman. If you're a woman, you shouldn't dress like a man. If you cross-dress, God doesn't like that. Um, first thing you have to understand about... Uh, being trans is that it has nothing to do with cross-dressing. Um, yes, a lot of transgender people, myself included, start kind of exploring, you know, that side of our identity um, with uh, things like that. Um, but it very quickly evolves past that and you very quickly start to understand, okay, these clothes make me feel good, but these clothes are not my identity, as opposed to an actual cross-dresser who is someone who identifies as a man in his everyday life. He doesn't have dysphoria about um, his dead name or any part of his body or anything like that. Um, he just gets off less than like a woman sometimes. And uh, that is something that is often attributed to trans people. That is um, really not fair because I basically cannot function as a man at all. And a cross-dresser can suppress that, can only do it at home, as some people say, right? Um, I don't have that luxury. I can't say, well, you know, I'll, I'll be okay if I, if I only wear a skirt at home or if I only do my makeup at home. Like, you know, I'll be fine because I'm not a cross-dresser. I'm transgender. And there's a very clear difference and a very uh, simple um, distinction. And again, if you can't or are not willing to make that, um, I don't, I don't know how much you're going to benefit from this video and by benefit from this video, I mean, just maybe understand the other side a little bit better. Um, the point of this video is not to, um, convince you. The point of this video is not to turn you into the world's biggest, um, 
transgender ally and put a pride flag on your car or anything like that. Um, I just, there, there's a lot of misconceptions out there about LGBT people and trans people specifically uh, that, that uh, I feel need to be addressed. Um, so before we go further, what actually happened? What is this whole big controversy that has everybody like all blown up, right? And everybody on any side is, has something to say about it. Um, so they have a cameraman. They have a bunch of cameramen, obviously. They have a whole bunch of crew doing different things. Um, and this specific instance um, regarding this incident was a cameraman. And um, he had a tiny little like three inch pride flag, the cameraman did, um, on his cameraman, on his camera. Um, it should be noted that the cameraman does not work for Dallas Jenkins. He does not work for The Chosen. He does not work for um, any church. Um, he's, uh, he's an independent contractor, um, just like every, everybody else in the crew is um, individual contractors. They don't work uh, for Dallas. Um, therefore, they don't um, answer like directly to him. Um, and this cameraman had a, a tiny little um, three inch uh, pride flag, uh, the progress pride flag. I've seen the picture, the same one as this one. Okay. Um, on his camera. Um, so what is pride? That, that's the question too, that you have to answer to really kind of understand this. And uh, well, why does he have such a need to have that flag on his camera, right? Why can't he just leave it at home? And um, because again, people are thinking and talking that, um, you know, it's rooted in um, sexual def uh, deviancy. It's rooted in um, sexual immorality. Um, so what pride actually is, and um, all of you who make comments like, well, uh, the Bible says that pride is a sin, pride comes before the fall and all of that. So I want you to think about if you've ever had pride for anything. Pride for your work. I I've had people say that to me on job sites. Oh, you should have pride in your work. Um, pride in your kids' accomplishments. Pride in your accomplishments. Um, just uh, um, being proud of yourself because you graduated from college or uh, you got that promotion at work that you've been working really hard for or, or whatever. It's all pride. The Bible does not specify that sexual pride is a sin, but other forms of pride are okay. So if you're going to tell me that I shouldn't have pride in who I am as a person because that's a sin, I, I would like you to examine your own life and uh, pull out uh, some examples and maybe some things that you've had pride about um, before you're so ready to, you know, condemn someone else. And as I like to say, punch somebody in the face with the Bible because that's basically what y'all do. And um, there's nothing godly about it. And you're definitely not um, bringing anyone into the kingdom. Um, so what is pride? Uh, pride is a uh, celebration of uh, how far we've come um, and also a, a recognition and, a, and an acknowledgement of how far we still need to go um, and human rights for other people who would be considered uh, to be uh, queer um, by heteronormative people. So uh, heteronormative is just a man who's dating a woman or a woman who's dating a man or somebody who is attracted um, in that direction um, they want to get married to somebody of the opposite gender. They want to have kids, all of this stuff. But basically what society, uh, for a long time up until recently has told you is normal. And that's everything else, every other lifestyle, every other sexual attraction, every other, everything is to be shunned. Um, it's not just people telling us that it's wrong. Um, it's not just people telling us that we're sinning and we're going to hell. Um, if it was just that, it would be very easy to ignore. Uh, there are, there have been laws, uh, made in the past. There are laws trying to be made today. Some of them successfully that is, um, targeting the lives of, uh, specifically at this point, transgender people. Um, and what pride is, is a celebration of the victory 
over that, that we have overcome these bigotry, uh, we have overcome these laws, um, even in sort of the midst of just all of this, um, even now as they continue to pass laws against our existence, we're going to be happy, we're going to exist, we're going to go to work, we're going to, um, you know, have our families, we're going to do, you know, the things that we do, and um, we're going to be strong in, in spite of it all. And uh, we're, we're going to have pride for, you know, what we are. And uh, again, um, if you are still watching at this point, um, that means that I, I have asked if you are one who acknowledges that it's not a choice to have these sort of um, transgender feelings. Um, so you understand that. Now, I will say also on top of that and this video is going to be a little bit longer than Dallas's. I'm just going to apologize. This was like 19 minutes. Mine might be 28, 30, something like that, uh, because there really is a lot of stuff that I have to say. Uh, my mouth is dry. I get my vanilla Coke, my favorite drink. Those of you that don't know, um, no, uh, I am not sponsored by Coke or anybody else. Wouldn't that be nice though? Okay. Um, so, uh, if you're still watching, um, and I wore this shirt for a reason, because I feel like for a lot of people, trans people are not really looked at as human. We're looked at as some kind of like, you know, boogeyman, you know, we're coming after your kids. We're trying to, you know, indoctrinate people like, you know, what people say. We just have like really dirty sexual minds and dirty fantasies. And we just want to like progress that onto, um, you know, society, onto everybody else. And I've had people say that to me that, uh, you know, what you do in your bedroom is your own business, but don't, you know, uh, don't, don't try to force the rest of us to play along with your fantasy, right, is what they say. Um, which if you're talking like that really kind of proves that you really don't know anything about transgender or what it is to be transgender because it's not something that I could turn off. Um, if I go out as a man, which I have tried to, uh, a few times, uh, for my safety, um, because I was in a situation that I didn't feel particularly safe, um, being visibly trans, um, I get uh, very unfunctional, I get uh, paralytic, I get uh, catatonic um, in some cases, and I will drive like an hour and a half to a place that I have to work, and then I'll just sit there in my car, and I won't do anything. And I'll miss out on the job, and I'll miss out on the money. Um, it's just something that, it's like a dark cloud that comes on you so fast, and y'all really, really, really don't understand. And as you, as you sit here, you try to, um, uh, condemn us and say that uh, you know that we're sinning and we're we're just we're just trying to like project our fantasies onto everybody else. We're trying to live and we can't function any other way. Uh, and I really wish that y'all and more people understood that. Um, and I don't feel that God loves me any less than He loves you. Or and it took a lot for me to get there. Um, it was the church that made me feel that God hates me. God didn't make me feel that way. I never asked Him. I made the same mistake that a lot of people make, which is that they let people tell them how God feels about them. Please don't ever let people any. Please don't ever let a person tell you how God feels about you. Ask God how God feels about you, because as soon as I did that, I instantly had peace. I instantly had a renewed joy. I instantly had a renewed mind. No, that does not mean that I suddenly stopped having transgender feelings. For those of you who are wishing that I was going to say that. Um, I felt a peace in his presence and I felt his embrace and I felt that, uh, you know, he's with me and um, that he loves me the same today as what he always has. And uh, I do go to church now regularly, every Sunday, every Wednesday, I have found an affirming church, um, thankfully not far from my area. Um, and uh, it is there is another trans person who goes there. There is a, um, a few um, bi and lesbian people who go there. There's a gay person who goes there. And there is a, a Kishet a heteronormative couple who goes there, a man and a woman. Um, and they have a kid together. Um, 
definitely not the type of people that you're used to seeing walk in the door. And I have, I have had many conversations with, with her, with him some, but mostly with her, um, just about, you know, y'all are not the normal type of people that seek out a church like this for, um, lack of better phrasing. And, um, she said that her heart breaks for the queer community, the trans community, the LGBT community as a whole. And uh, she basically voices the importance of being a loud and vocal ally um, and standing up for the population of people who are the most vulnerable and uh, the most beaten down. Um, and right now we're the ones that are having all these laws and stuff uh, passed against us. And so she's going to come and uh, worship with us, e even though she herself, she can go to any church in the land and be accepted. Um, but almost any church in the land, she's a minority woman. So uh, there are some more racist places that probably would not have her. But, but for the most, she certainly can walk into a lot more churches than I can. Um, and she chooses to walk into ours uh, because she wants us to know that she is beside us and uh, she's an ally and she's an activist and she's all these things. Um, and I'm, I'm going to play, not play, I'm, I'm going to take this on a slightly different spin for a second, okay? And I'm going to say, let's just pretend, for the sake of the argument, that uh, being trans is a sin. Well, before I say that, I have to say this. Uh, Deuteronomy 22.5, I didn't actually get to do that example, because I speed right past points sometimes. Um, so Deuteronomy 22.5, uh, as we have earlier, we highlighted the difference between being trans and actually just being a cross-dresser. Um, Deuteron Deuteronomy 25 on its surface doesn't have anything to do with being trans. It just has to do with the type of clothes that you're wearing, which, had, which has nothing to do with being trans. If I take all of this off right now, if I take my makeup off right now, if I, um, you know, if I take my nails off um, and I just start dressing like a man again, I grow my beard again and I do all of that. Can I tell you, can I tell you a secret? I'm still trans. I'm still a woman on the inside. I'm just allowing the, the world to dictate um, what I show them. Um, and being trans is really about, um, embracing your identity and saying like, I don't really care what anybody says about it. I don't really care what anybody does. I'm going to be who I am on the inside. Um, and cross-dressers do not risk their lives to cross-dress. I risk my life several times a day, depending on where I am going somewhere in a small town in a bigoted area, visibly transgender. Cross-dressers don't do that. Cross-dressers go to work, they stop for some food on the way home, maybe, and then they come home and then they take their work pants off and they put a skirt on or pantyhose or, or whatever they put on. So it's it's very disrespectful to the, the things that trans people go through to say that we're basically just cross-dressers um, which is, if you read it at the surface level, that's all Deuteronomy 22.5 is talking about. Um, so the thing about Deuteronomy 22.5 is that it, it really doesn't even have anything to do with cross-dressing. If you read it, if you go back in the, uh, into the original Hebrew language, um, which some of the Bible is written that way, you have to kind of go back and uh, see, okay, well, what was happening at this time, what is, what is this actual Hebrew word, or what is this actual uh, Greek word? What is what is this um, author actually trying to tell us through this? Um, and uh, that is never more apparent than in uh, Deuteronomy twenty two five, uh, because um, and again, the reason why I have this shirt is because it's really easy for people to look at trans people and think that we're just like monsters, we're boogeymen, we're coming after your kids or whatever. I'm a human. And there's some hearts down here that you can't really see, but um, I'm just a person just like you. I struggle to pay my bills just like you. My dog just a couple of years ago uh, had cancer really bad and I blew through my life savings. It was like $7,000, took every single dollar I had saved to treat him for that. Um, 
And now he's got another spot very close to where the first one was. So I'm very emotional and going through it right now on most days. Uh, I, I certainly don't think about um, you know, transgender conversations in schools or uh, going on the internet and trying to convince other people that they're trans or whatever it is that y'all say that y'all think that we do. Um, so anyway, uh, Deuteronomy 22.5 uh, talks about um, on its surface that a man should not dress as a woman and a woman should not dress as a man. And whoever does this is an abomination to God. Uh, if you look in the King James Version, um, it says, uh, pertaineth to, a man should not put on that which pertaineth to a woman, nor should a woman put on that which pertaineth to a man, or actually that's reversed. Um, a woman should not put on that which pertaineth to a man, nor should a man put on that which pertaineth to a woman, for whoever does this is detestable to the Lord your God. Uh, so the Hebrew word for, uh, pertaineth, um, is, a uh, kale. And it basically means, um... Article, utensil, implement, um, accessory, um, something having to do with the subject matter. For example, this lid pertains to this bottle. This label pertains to this bottle. My nose pertains to me. It's my nose. It's not someone else's nose. Um, my key fob pertains to my car. Um, it's not about anything that you wear. Um, yes, you could make some kind of argument that this bottle is wearing this label and this bottle is wearing this lid, but my key fob isn't wearing my car. My car isn't wearing my key fob, but it pertains to it. So where am I going with that? Um, the other thing that you have to know about 22.5, and again, I'm just going to make this very quick example because this video is probably going to be closer to 35 minutes than 30. Um, if you if you go into the um, Hebrew again um, and you look at, uh, so you know a man should not wear that which pertains to a man, or to a woman, uh, a woman shouldn't wear that which pertains to a man. Uh what word did they use for man? Because there was a few different words for man and they all kind of meant something different. Um, for those of you who think that this whole, you know, differentiation between what kind of man and stuff like that is just something that just came about right now because of the whole transgender thing. Uh, it, it's something that even the Hebrews um, recognized and they had a bunch of different like pronouns and, and stuff like that. And uh, just uh, descriptors of uh, different types of masculine things, different types of feminine things. Um, you won't hear this in church most of the time. Um, if you are a man, uh, no matter what type of man you are. You're a more masculine man, you're a more feminine man, you're uh, soft, you're tough, um, you're a fighter, you're somebody who cleans the floor, you're a cook, whatever you are. If you're a man, you're born male, you have male genitalia. Um, in the Hebrew language, uh, you are either a dom or ish. They mean the same thing. Uh, no, not a dom, a dom. It's, it's uh, Basically, like Adam, um, it's just a different um, uh, pronunciation of Adam, but that's where they get um, the word Adam from. Um, again, that, that word ish um, or Adam, it applies to all men, no matter what. So then that's when you get into, okay, well, what is a woman? What is a man, right? Um, if a man is... Um, feels like a woman on the inside, is he really a woman or is she really a woman or is he a man or, and these are science questions. These are not theological questions. Um, so I'm not, I don't really have time to 
get into that whole explanation because I've already been talking for a very long time. Um, the interesting thing about 22.5 is that it does not use either one of those words in describing man. Uh, what it uses is uh, ish, or geber. Um, um, which geber, no, not gerber, like the baby, uh, geber. Uh, Gaber specifically refers to a very masculine person, um, a fighter, a warrior, a soldier, uh, somebody like that. So it's a very specific type of men that we are talking about in Deuteronomy 22.5. Um, if they had meant it to be applied to all men, they would have said uh, Ish or Adam. They said Yaber. They are specifically referring to the type of man who takes up weapons and armor and stuff like that. Um, also, this is the only place in the Old Testament uh, where the word kale, uh, which is used to uh, say pertaineth to, is used to mean um, clothing. Um, it's almost always used to refer to uh, weapons, armor, um, stuff like that, not something that you would just put on like to go to the market or something like that. Um, so now the verse is starting to make a little bit more sense, right? It's starting to come together. Um, so if you look at the verse with knowing like sort of kind of how, uh, what the original Hebrew words meant, um, another way that you could read that is, and again, um, at this time there wasn't really woman soldiers or anything. So that's why it's worded this way. Uh, but basically the woman should not rise to um, the status of a warrior. The woman should not try to put on a woman's or a warrior's armor and uh, pick up his sword and stuff like that and try to fight. Um, nor should the warrior uh, put down his uh, weapons, take off his armor, and hide behind the woman, hide behind the, uh, the fragile crowd, the people who can't fight. Because at the time, a, a woman soldier. Um, was um, pretty unheard of. Yes, they existed kind of here and there, but they were pretty, like, spotty. Um, and so that's what this verse is really saying. Um, so I would think based on reading that and based on kind of the context of the definitions of the words that are actually used, they had a perfectly good word. They had two, actually, perfectly good words that actually means all men everywhere, every single man on earth, no matter how you feel or how strong you are or how tough you are or anything. If you are a man, this applies to you. They have two different perfectly good words that mean that, and they didn't use either one of them. They use the one that specifically means somebody who picks up a sword and fights. So that I would think that the abomination to God in this verse that is talking about is cowards. God has given you the strength to fight uh, be it physical or mental or whatever, uh, but God has given you the ability to fight whatever battle that you're in. And um, you're a coward and you're hiding behind people who can't fight, who are weak, and you're making them like fight in your stead. That's the abomination unto God. Um, you're, you're rejecting his gift for you, his strength or whatever it was that he gave you, and you're hiding behind someone else. Um, and you're letting them, in some cases, die for you because you don't want to... Um, use the strength that uh, God gave you. Um, that's a very basic uh, sort of historical context of that. Uh, we unfortunately don't have time to get deeper. I could do a whole two hours on Deuteronomy 22.5. We just don't have it. Um, but that is a verse that gets thrown against trans people constantly. And it doesn't have anything to do with being trans. And on the surface, it looks like it might have to do with cross-dressing, which doesn't have anything to do with being trans. And then if you actually look look into it, you find it doesn't have anything to do with that either. It's about men putting down their weapons when they're at war and hiding behind women or hiding behind people who aren't fighting. Um, so there was a quote one time that I heard and um, I don't have it memorized, unfortunately, nor do I remember who said it. I will tell you that it's not mine. Um, but it's basically that uh, when Christians want to go around 
punching people in the face with the Bible, right? And uh, they are um, condemning people and saying, um, you know, what, what these people are saying is that uh, Dallas should take a stand. Dallas Jenkins, the creator of The Chosen, should take a stand. And do what? Tell him, I don't like trans people, I don't like gay people, and I don't like... Uh, do y'all know how many people have um, committed suicide? Um, trans people, LGBT people have committed suicide over the years um, because of legislation, because of non-acceptance, because of um, all of this different stuff that's going on. And all, all what a pride flag does, there, there's people who aren't trans, who aren't gay, who aren't anything, who have pride flags. Because all it's saying is, look, you know, I accept you. I love you. Um, I don't want you to kill yourself. I don't want you to put yourself to that deep sort of uh, depression because you think that no one loves you and no one understands. I love you. I understand. That's all a pride flag is saying. Um, and asking someone to, uh, I mean, we don't know the story. Like he, he could have, he could have like, you know, a gay brother or something who um, attempted suicide or something or um, a trans sister or whatever. And that, that's just his way of like being with that person uh, through the day. But you're gonna tell him, take that off your camera? And I, I don't know, I don't know. I'm just guessing at the uh, scenario. Um, but you would feel pretty bad if you, had a, if you have a conscience, if you told him um, you know, take that off, you know, we don't endorse that, you know, whatever, then you find out it's something like that. If you have a conscience, you would feel bad about it. Um, and then uh, some of all of the chosen actors, not all of them, but a lot of them kind of stood up and was like, you know, hey, uh, don't be homophobic here. Uh, Jesus loved everyone, you know, that whole thing. And uh, I tend to agree, but even if you don't think that, again, uh, I was in a period of my life where I spent most of the time thinking that God hated me unless I was watching this show. I surely wasn't going to church. I surely wasn't reading the Bible. Uh, this, this show, a lot of the time, was the only exposure at all that I had to Jesus in a period of my life when I was contemplating suicide. So ask yourself if me not watching the show because I'm trans is really what you want because basically what you're saying is that uh, in a period of my life when this show was the only access that I have to Jesus that I just shouldn't have had access to him because we're hijacking or whatever um, the Jesus show. Uh, I'm just going to tell you gay people and trans people have always existed and if you think that uh, bashing us and uh, telling us that we're wrong. We've heard it for our entire lives. It's not gonna make us not trans. If I, if I stop doing everything uh, today, I'm still gonna be trans. I'm still gonna have like this identity feeling inside. I'm just not doing anything about it on the outside, which what does that mean most likely? That I'm suppressing a lot of things. I'm miserable, I'm depressed, I'm all of these things. Uh, pray the gay away does not work. Pray the trans away, in my case, does not work. I've tried it, and all it got me was wanting to kill myself more than what I already did. So that would be my challenge to some of you who want to boycott the show or um, I mean, Dallas, Dallas hardly endorsed pride. Right. Uh, it, it was, it's somebody that works on the set that had a pride flag on his camera. And Dallas in his video said that, um, you know, we believe in the Bible. We believe in what the Bible says. Um, and we don't endorse um, anything. But it's not based, it's basically not his place to. And you know what? I'm still going to watch season four. Even though Dallas, and it would have made me happy for Dallas to make a video and, and give like a resounding endorsement of, you know, the uh, LGBTQ community and transgender people and stuff like that. Because uh, this is a show that has been a lot to me, but I'm still going to watch season four, even though I didn't have that. Um, so 
that is what I would say. Um, and there, there's people that's like, oh my God, there's a, a guy that doesn't even work for it L has had a little tiny pride flag on his camera. We can't watch the show anymore. And the creator of the show basically told me that he said it in a nice way, but he basically said that like, you know, I'm sinning. I might be going to hell. And I'm still gonna watch the show, but you can't get past a, a pride flag on a camera. Um, anyway, uh, that's pretty much everything that I have to say about it. Um, at some point, even if it is wrong, I don't obviously believe that it is. Uh, I think when you look through the Bible and you look at some of the history of things that were said and you look at the context of everything that was going on at the time, even if Deuteronomy 22.5 means exactly everything it says um, in English, which they didn't speak, but even if it means exactly everything it says in English, we are under a new law, we're under a new covenant. Paul says, uh, we're not uh, the people of the law anymore, we're the people of Christ. Um, and he goes as far as to say, the law commands wrath, but where there is no law, neither is there a violation. In other words, it's not that we're allowed to break the law and do whatever we want because we believe in Jesus. It's that the law just, it literally is not there. Jesus overcame the law. Um, and at the end of the day, I believe that our only job is to love people. Uh, there's plenty of people who do things that I don't think that they should be doing. Um, and I just love them. So you, even if you think that like, you know, I'm wrong for, um, my lifestyle or whatever, uh, it's, I'm, I'm very sad and scared for this world and, and kind of where we're going. And the irony of it is a lot of y'all probably are too, but for vastly different reasons. See, y'all probably think that people like me are ruining the world when all we're trying to do is exist. I, I don't care if a little kid is trans or not. I don't care if my next door neighbors are trans. I, I have enough of a hard time managing my own life to be going and trying to quote unquote teach this stuff to other people. Okay. I'm just trying to exist in my space. I'm just trying to, you know, maybe get a little bit of a leg up on my depression. Um, which church is helping me with. I, I'm going to, this might surprise some of you, but I feel closer to, to God now than I have in a long time. Um, I feel like for the first time ever, I'm actually coming to him and worshiping him as me, as opposed to, okay, well, I'm going to, you know, put on this man mask and I'm going to go, you know, try to be tough enough and masculine enough so that I can come for God or come to God. This is me. This out here is what I feel in here. And, uh, yeah. No, no amount of condemnation and uh, telling me I'm going to hell and uh, telling me that I should watch The Chosen and stuff like that is, is going to take that stuff away. Um, the only thing that it does is it makes, it makes someone who already doesn't feel like that they can go very many places. And it takes even more places away from them. And uh, if, if you really love God, if you really love Christ, uh, I, I would uh, challenge you to love LGBT people and trans people. And what that means is not, um, like I said, just start by just having a conversation with one of us. Because I promise you, most of you do not know a trans person. Even if you know somebody that's trans, you don't know anything about them because you won't go talk to them. So, oh, that's, uh, well, that's Susie, but he's really Steve. Such a sad story. Such a sad, sad story. We, we pray for him. We pray for him. Why don't you go and actually have a conversation with Susie and see what Susie is like, see what Susie's personality is. Steve mo might have the, the most dry, dead personality in the world. That, that's what happened with me when I came out um, in many ways, I had all this personality that was just bubbling to the surface that I never realized was there. Uh, I, I never realized I was pressing. Um, I tried cross-dressing for the first time when I was like 10. 
uh, I stopped after a couple of times because I almost got caught by my stepdad. Um, I have very, who was very abusive. I have very blurry memories of like playing with my, um, my sister's uh, dolls when she wasn't there. Uh, the last thing that I remember after that was uh, my stepdad walking into the room. So that tells me that uh, the resulting things probably was not very good. Um, I wanted to do all kinds of things that um, men don't do, boys don't do. So I just didn't do them. That I suppress. Now, again, being effeminate, um, wanting to wear a skirt, liking how you look at makeup, none, none of that like makes you a woman, right? It's a very nuanced thing. And I'm definitely not saying if your seven-year-old son wants to put on a dress that you should immediately start that, oh, well, he's probably trans. Like, it could just be a phase, but it might not be. And the problem is that people will act like it always is. And that the times when it's not, the times when you don't grow out of it, that it's a very severe mental illness that you have to treat, right? Like conversion therapy and stuff like that. And that doesn't help anybody. I'm 32. I got my first apartment in my own name this year. I got my first car in my own name this year. I just finally started being financially stable this year. I came out last year. I started HRT in January of this year. So maybe, just maybe, are you willing to even entertain for a second that maybe there is legitimacy to the science behind it, like they keep saying, and that this, this um, in my case, estrogen is realigning my brain into the way that it's actually supposed to fire, and now things make sense to me. Now I can function. Now I can actually do things that's, 32 year old people do like go to work and have a functional life and not be just paralyzed in bed all the time. Maybe. Anyway, I didn't mean to talk for, for 45 minutes. I was trying to get it closer to 30. Um, I don't hate anybody. E even the most visceral, um, you know, MAGA person is, oh, you're going to hell and um, I love you. Um, I wish you nothing but the best. Um, Comment on this video, um, you know, we'll, we'll, um, you can meet up and, uh, you know, go have, go have some coffee or something and, uh, and talk if you want to. I'm always down to talk to anybody. I don't care. Um, I can always defend my points. I can always, you know, we're not, we're not going to heal this country with more division. We're not going to heal this country with any more of, well, this side over here is doing it. And that's why a lot of people on the left don't like me very much because, well, not, I shouldn't say a lot. Some people on the left don't like me very much because they say that I'm too nice to Republicans. I don't put my foot down enough. And uh, I just believe that uh, a, lot of a lot of things that people say and do is, is um, rooted in fear and rooted in um, not knowing. There, there's a fear that comes in and not really knowing or understanding a thing. And uh, that, that can be hard. Um, so, yeah. Uh, you know... Uh, hit me up, make a comment. Let's go, let's go grab a coffee. Let's go grab some lunch. Let's go, let's talk. Um, you know, and see if we can't get to, you know, kind of the, the middle, uh, uh, some kind of compromise. And again, there's people on the left that's going to say that, um, you know, I shouldn't waste my time and uh, that I should be, you know, more like hardcore about it. And But I just, I don't we don't get anywhere with more hatred. Love casts out all darkness and love casts out all fear. And uh, ultimately that's, that's what's going to heal this land is, is love. Not, not hatred, not fear, not all of this division. There's a spirit of division on this country right now. And I'm not falling for it. I am not falling victim to it. I am not going to say, I don't want anything to do with you because of whatever, even if you hate me, that's fine. Um, yeah, I, I guess that's, uh, that's really all I have to say. 50 minutes. Come on, Tori. Even everybody at church says the same thing that I talk way too much. So, uh, anyway, uh, God bless you all. Um, wish you nothing but the best, nothing but love moving forward. Really, truly, honestly. Um, I, uh, that was kind of all over the place in this video, but. Hopefully y'all basically got the gist of what I was trying to say.
Much love.